What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. As I'm filming this, we are two days away from the opening of muskie and pike season here in Wisconsin. And one thing I've been meaning to make for quite some time is a muskie bump board. Now you can go out and buy these things and they're like 80 to 100 bucks, which is ridiculous for something that's basically a ruler, um, just oversized. And I made one a while ago. I'll show you that here. This was the first one we made here. And this basically is a piece of deck board and one of the little stick-on rulers that you can get put on the side of your boat or anything, which is nice, but this thing doesn't fold or anything. So I've got, what, 60 inches long that barely fits in my little boat. So today I'm gonna be making a nicer folding one and showing you guys how we do it. And by the way, this one, these sticker things, you can use these, uh, you can do it for the same thing. I don't have an extra one, so that's not gonna be what I'm doing today. Um, however, if you do have one of these sticker things laying around, it works awesome. Just make sure that they are accurate with a tape measure first. Uh, Cause I think when we did this one, we, test we tested out like three different sticker ones and only this one was like actually on and they were off by like a crazy amount too. Um, this is the Joe Booker sticker. I don't know if they make those anymore, but if you do, you see it at an expo or something, you can use that or whatever one you find, just take a tape measure and make sure it is accurate first. But, um, so today, this one is gonna cost what? I think the most expensive piece of this was the board, which is similar to that board that I just used. Um, we're looking at 26 bucks for that board, which is pretty expensive for basically a piece of board, but you can use like a two by four or literally anything else. Um, the only reason I'm doing this plastic board is it's gonna be submerged in water and stuff. Um, when you're getting it wet before you put a fish on there, so that's nice, and then like stainless hardware, stainless hinges, stuff like that. So the total thing, probably 35 bucks maybe. Um, let's get into it. I'll show you guys first off what you're gonna need for this project. Number one, eight foot board. Uh, that is eight inches that way by eight foot by three quarter or one inch, and that is plastic, like decking. You can find it at Menards or anything. PVC wood though, not normal wood. That way you don't have to coat it with any waterproof or anything. Uh, it's gonna be already ready to go and it's gonna last forever. Some sort of way to mark the lines for the inches, depending on what you decide to do. A square to ensure that your boards are straight and the angles and everything as well as the inch lines are true. A couple C clamps to make sure that the boards are straight when you're screwing in the hinges as well as screwing the sides on. A drill with a Phillips tip or whatever you have for your screws. A miter saw. And finally you'll need a tape measure and we've got the optional Swedish fish here. You can't go wrong with them. So I was doing some thinking. Uh, yeah, I guess there is a first time for everything. But anyways, this piece here, I was trying to figure out what length to cut that at. And basically what I came up with is the fact that if we're having a board on this side as well, uh, which is optional in your case, guys, but uh, if we are, what we do want is we want this piece to be the same height as this. So basically we have to cut this upright bump piece to the same width as our board is. In this case, it is uh, seven and a quarter inches. So make sure you guys measure that before you cut this because you'll want to cut that to the same length as the width of your board. Basically what I'm saying is you want this piece to be a square. So this will show you guys basically more of what I was just trying to explain to you. What I figured is if we have this side piece, which you don't really have to have, and who knows, someday I might cut it off because it's pretty tall and might take up more space. Um, but if you do decide to have that, you'll want to make this front piece the exact same height as the width of that board. So that way it squares up and you don't have a super short board here and then a tall one here. That way it's all kind of even and looks nice. 
So the next thing we're really gonna have to think about here is if you look at this board, I have not cut the other end here yet. This is the board I cut to 30 inches. Now what we have to think about is the fact that we have a gap here where your hinges are. And depending on how you do your hinges, whether they're on the top or the bottom, is gonna change basically how you cut it. And the hinges exactly that you use are gonna be uh, make a difference as well because if you have little skinny hinges you might have let's say a quarter inch gap if you have really big hinges like a door hinge or something you might have more like a half inch gap in my case I have a 3 8 inch gap here so what I'm gonna have to do is I'll measure I measured 60 inches from there from that end down and it actually ends up being a little bit shorter um, because of that so mine is gonna be about 3 8 of an inch shorter than the 30 inches so I'm gonna have to cut that to 29 and 5 eighths I believe that was and that's gonna be uh, kind of something you guys got to remember plus that'll help having this end shorter uh, compared to where we have the actual bump piece uh, is gonna help when you fold this board in it's gonna fold in nice and not hit the bump board so it won't be able to close uh, so make sure that you have the short end being the end that is gonna be like the tail of the fish so I finally cut the last piece and basically uh, my leftover piece is what I'm using for the uh, kind of back piece uh, and what that's going to do is allow you to bump the fish up a little bit easier, keep them from like jumping off or anything, uh, rolling off or sliding off anything um, and basically I wasn't sure as to what length I wanted this but I looked at a bunch of the pictures of the actual like bump boards and stuff that other people have made and they pretty much all go almost to the hinge so this worked out perfect with the eight foot board that I had um, but this is also a good time for you guys to double check um, so the hinges on these are basically going to make your boards line up perfectly like this so you can see I've got one board set on top of the other and what that allows us is you want to make sure you have a little bit of a gap so I've got about three eighths of an inch gap because that's what I cut out of the hinges. So you want to make sure that you've got enough there to where you can bump this up and fold it out without having issues of this getting hit on there. So basically that's one thing you can check first and then right now we're basically ready to screw the whole thing together. Um, so I'll show you guys that. Okay so to keep the hinges perfect so that it fall, folds exactly on itself without any issue making sure they're all straight and not all wonky and having issues binding up. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking some clamps here, some C-clamps, and I clamped the board to a sawhorse, actually both boards, and I put these in so they've got, you know, we can line it up exactly where we want, the same distance on each side so it looks good. And what I've also done now is this is the last chance you have before you screw these in to make sure that this is straight. So what I did is took a square, and made sure that these boards are lined up perfectly straight on both edges uh, that way we don't have any issues with it folding and not being centered on itself and you can also right now check to make sure that the boards are folded in the position that you want uh, so that you have the correct side in this case i want the smooth side versus kind of the bumpy edge to be where we lay the fish on now for the moment of truth here to see how lined up that actually was. Well, that's an issue. I guess the moral of the story is put the hinges on the correct way. much better and since we measured that out it lines up pretty much perfect uh, we do have just a touch of a gap here uh, whereas this bottom board is out a little bit more so what we're gonna have to do with that is make sure that we have like the bump piece and everything actually on this side we're gonna have the bump piece basically here and we're gonna have to make sure that we put that sideboard on this side versus the side that it's in otherwise this will bind up against that 
Uh, so if you do have a little tiny gap like that, not a big deal. Just make sure you put your sideboard on that side that sticks out a little bit further. So I got this all clamped up to uh, screw in the end here. Basically, I'm gonna run a couple screws uh, across here through into the long board. Um, but what I did there to get that clamped up, if you guys can see here, is I put a couple uh, little pieces of board in there. That way it's all, I had something to clamp to basically. So it's all straight and everything. Um, you wanna make sure it doesn't stick out to where you're gonna have that sideboard. Basically it's all lined up perfect and now I can go ahead and screw that in. The clamps are going to hold it from wiggling hopefully. So I honestly have no idea what the best method for actually marking the inches is going to be. Uh, what I think I'm going to end up doing, which by the way, if you guys, the last clip you probably saw was me putting the end board on. I actually had to unscrew that. Reason being, I wanted to take a tape measure and actually hang it over the edge and I clamped the tape measure on that way nothing was wiggling and these lines that I marked, I marked a little inch lines everything is going to be perfectly uh, exact to what the tape measure is so i did end up having to take that off and we'll put it back on um, so don't do that yet but anyways now what i'm going to do is take this square here and i'm going to do every inch i think with a black sharpie i'm not sure how the sharpie will end up staying um i'll if this is like a year from now i'll put in the comments below if it ended up fading or anything um but i think what i will do since i am going to sharpie this is i'm going to run some polyurethane over it anyways um just like you would with wood or anything to hopefully keep it sealed in um but anyways yeah we're gonna get started i think i'm gonna do a couple different length lines um, basically the longest one being for the full inches, maybe like a half one for half inches and then a little like quarter length one that's going to be like quarter inches and three quarter. Uh, we'll see, I'll show you guys as we go. Um, and I'm going to do them each a different color as well. So black will be the full inch, um, half inch can be red and the quarter and three quarter will be this like green Sharpie. Um, but I'll show you guys as we go. All right, so I finished up the first half, or the first foot of this board. Um, it took maybe 10 minutes of my time, so not actually terrible. Now I have to do that five more times, four more times to get to the end there. Um, I'll see you guys once we get that done and we'll head up to the next step. But so far it looks good. As you can see, you know, I've got that full long line for the uh, full inch, the red shorter line. This was five inches on this board. And then the green one is four inches. And basically the reason I did that is that way they'd still stick a little bit past the halfway point where your fish's tail might be. So no matter where the tail's bent, it's always gonna be able to see it versus being too far below the line. Uh, I just wanted to have that so the fish the tail when you pinch it is always gonna be on the line, not below it. All right guys, so we finished this up. It ended up being pretty good here. I'll show you guys, as you can see, once we get in focus, you can see we got all the inches there. Uh, we got the number there. I did on the over the side of the line. So if you hit that line, you know you're at the one right next to it. In this case, one inch. Um, but we got the full one inch. Uh, the half inches, as I mentioned, are five inches long. Quarter inches are going to be four inches long. I did end up making a mistake right here. I accidentally made that line all the way long. And this one as well little bit longer uh, but the one thing I did make a big mistake on is this is a left-handed bump board I wanted it a right-handed so basically what I did is halfway through numbering all these I realized the lines should have been the other way so your numbers and stuff are on the that side but whatever it ended up being all right I guess I could have fixed it um, but this way we'll just have to have the gill in hand in our left hand when we go bump it on there 
So that actually turned out pretty cool and was really easy. It took maybe an hour and a half to make total. Um, and I think it was about 30, 35 bucks. You could make it even cheaper, as I mentioned, if you used like two by four or something. Obviously it wouldn't last as long being not plastic and not stainless stuff, um, but it is possible if you guys are on a budget, you could probably make it for like five bucks at that point. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a thumbs up below and subscribe while you're down there. We'll see you guys on the next video.